I know you're disappointed. Sue isn't here with me and I'm disappointed too. But uh, that's the way it goes, right? Okay, so we have the changing of the seasons in Utah anyway. And, you know, the, the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, here's, this is the cold and flu season. And this is when, uh, and it's usually, you know, these seasonal changes where, where our bodies are a little bit more susceptible. I'll tell you, through our trip through England and Scotland, which I promise Sue and I are going to do a video together uh, on this, probably the next one. Um, through our trip, we pounded the cardio miracle on the planes, you know, in the different places. And I'll tell you, we had the energy. We walked some days. One day we walked, according to people's watches and things, it was like seven miles or some crazy thing. Uh, up and down hills and all around. It was just spectacular, but we had the energy. We stayed healthy uh, and um, knock on wood. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> um, so we, I attribute a lot of it to Cardio Miracle. I really do. I mean, good clean living, uh, exercise, is, is always the basis, you know, but, um, having, having the, 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 the nutrients, the vitamins, and then the, the ingredients that, that create the nitric oxide that gets the blood flowing and the oxygen and everything. I think it's awesome. And we had a, a great trip. If, if you're feeling like you might need a little extra to get you through the changing of the seasons, particularly if you live in this type of area. Uh, I would highly recommend it. So I'll put the link to it for a discount. Cardio Miracle. I love it. And for, for traveling, they have the little individual packets. It's easy. You get bottled water virtually anywhere in the world now. You take a little drink of the bottled water to, to lower the level down a little bit. You pour the pre-measured packet in there and you shake it and drink it and away you go. But I pretty much had three a day. There might've been some days I only had two just because busy and everything, but, but I, you know, now I will say that quite often I've heard people say that when they've traveled, they get over jet lag a little faster. Now that particular thing didn't help me this time. <laughs> For some reason, for a few days, I was just kind of in a fog, but that might have been my own fault. I, I didn't sleep much, but I did study on the plane. And uh, uh, I, I really like, that. that's what I like to do on the flights. Now, I did watch a movie, one movie, uh, just because at some point, you know, your brain just, just can't handle it. But, but uh, I did the Come Follow Me, did some other studies, other reading. I read most of... Jonathan Kahn's newest book, which was fantastic. Um, so far, I'm, I don't know how far along I am. I can't remember because I read it on my Kindle and I just, you know, go through it. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll talk more about that trip, but I just wanted to get that, that in on, on cardio miracle. It's awesome. And I'll put the link to it. Okay. Let's talk just to, briefly again on, on this Timothy Ballard situation. Look, I, I was disappointed to hear uh, some, and I'll name names because they put it out there, but Greg Madsen and Eric Mutzos, you know, they had phone calls from anonymous victims anonymous alleged alleged victims that called in and uh, both of them and and said now one has identified herself and she's representing six or eight or something others uh, where they're um, alleging that that there was misconduct sexual sexual misconduct uh, of some you know different degrees uh, if you if you're interested in this, you've stayed up on it, and you know what I'm talking about. Now, as far as I know, there has been 
only an investigation, but we don't really know exactly what that investigation by Davis County, uh, uh, what that entailed. If it entailed uh, uh, more business uh, type things, uh, you know, fraud or, or whatever, or if it, 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 it did include these, these women coming forth, I, I don't know what that investigation, maybe some of you do. But that investigation investigation went on for quite some time and was dropped. No charges have ever been uh, assessed to Timothy Ballard. Now, again, I'll repeat: I do this every time. I'm I, I'm not an apologist for Timothy Ballard. I don't. I've never read any of his books. I I I. But I know people that have that I love and trust, and they said they're really good. Um. I, I haven't followed him in any any way. I did go to the movie Sounds of Freedom and I loved it. And the the way I, I do things now is if as if the, the the global effort is to condemn somebody or a movie or something like that and, and make it to be uh bad or or an exaggeration or whatever, then then I know that they're over the target and it's actually a really good movie. That That's what I base this on. I saw all the opposition against that movie and went, oh, it must be good. <laughs> and it was really good. So uh, I don't hear a lot of people uh, um, that, that are um, kind of against Timothy Ballard within the church now. Uh, they were for him before, and now they're against him. I don't hear a lot of them really being critical of the film and, and what happened, but more of all these allegations. So no charges, one investigation that was dropped. Now, th these, these latest allegations might produce another investigation. I don't know. But, you know, we, we say the phrase all the time, uh, innocent until proven guilty. But in this case, it, it just wasn't that way. Now, the statement from Doug Anderson, the, 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 um, uh, oh, and I've got to, <laughs> I've got to fix what I said before, but okay. So his statement as the director of media relations for the church, um, which I, my last video, I was so excited. Hey, he's going to get replaced, but it's a different title, different position. Uh, I have heard and talked to some people, but it's hard to verify anything. But those two departments kind of work hand in glove or hand in hand. They, they work together to, to put forth the, the, the image or the message of the church. So, but apparently we're still, we still have Doug Anderson. Now, I use names, specific names, for people who have put out statements and, and actually said things. And, and then, then I, I feel okay with it. Um, but to accuse somebody of, of something that they're saying that they, they didn't do or didn't say, and, and, yet, and there's no evidence brought forth, I, I just think there's something wrong with that. So I still have an issue with that statement from Doug Anderson um, morally unacceptable behavior. I, I, I can't remember the, the exact thing, but dis, you know, we're, we're distancing ourselves from him, from the, the church is distancing themselves or elder Ballard, president Ballard is distancing himself from Tim Ballard. You know, the, the verbiage just didn't seem very good to me. Now there's, there's other victims in this, if you think about it. So, so there's an attack on Tim, which, which even if those things are true, uh, let's, let's let the process go before we pass a judgment. Let's, let's let the process go through and, and see. But, but the statement by Doug Anderson was very definitive and, and yet no details. <laughs> um, so, if 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 you had a situation where somebody said that that your behavior was morally uh, unacceptable or something like that from a, an institution that you belong to, and then you go, well, what what do you mean by that? What what happened? And 
what did I do? And then there's no clarification and, and nothing done through, through ecclesiastical channels, bishop, stake, president, or whatnot. You know, it, it, it looks kind of weird, but the, but the real, to me right now, the real victim is not only uh, Tim, which could turn out that, that he did those things, but the fam his family. Can you imagine what they're going through right now? Like how comfortable would they be just walking into church and sitting down? Like, hey, uh, I mean, think about it, folks. We're, we're doing some really serious damage. So so back to Eric Mutsos and, and uh, Greg Madsen on their channels uh, and their podcasts. Um, you know, accepting these allegations and then and then passing a judgment. It's really, really intense. Eric's especially, and he got all emotional and, you know, he said some really weird things in my opinion. First, it was my former friend, my former friend, Tim, Timothy Ballard, but then he, but then he had a message at the end and he said, I love you. Well, that's kind of weird to say, I, you're not my friend anymore, which would, you know, if you say my former friend, that means you're not my friend. And, and yet, and then, and then you're going to say, I love you. And I really want you to repent because you're guilty because you know, when you know is what, is what he said. So I, I didn't feel comfortable with that. Now, look, Eric puts out some awesome stuff. Um, I was sent that video. I don't watch him on a regular basis, but I, I would agree with a lot of what he says and, you know, more power to him, but that particular thing, it felt really awkward to me. And the same with Greg Madsen. He did a short video from uh, Cairo where he had a phone call and, and long conversations with, I think he, I think it was two uh, of the women that allegedly had issues with Tim Ballard uh, during his operation um, um, with our so I don't know, that's, that's my take. I, I'm just, I'm kind of tired of it. Um, I feel really, really bad for the family in general, for Timothy Ballard's family, because it's so easy to allege things. And in this particular case, he's done, he's done. Do, do you really think he'll ever have a political career? Do you think he'll ever have a really good, strong business career? Do you think he'll ever have a, a an opportunity to really serve much in the church? Probably not. It's over. Um, now, his relationship with Jesus Christ is not over. If he chooses it not to be over. Uh, we, that's, that's up to us individually. And that's what is such a blessing, such a blessing, uh, is, is having a personal relationship with Christ because no matter what anybody does to us, we have that. We always have that. So, um, you know, whether, whether there's this major repentance that Tim needs to do, I have no idea. And, and really, it's, it's not my business, um, you know, to, to, to just say all these things. And, and why, why are these women calling guys like Eric and, and Greg Matson? Why would they be calling him, them? You know, maybe they're, you know, they're both handsome guys. And <laughs> nobody, I've never had any women calling me. What's going on here? <laughs> I can't imagine, you know. Um, I'm just kind of being lighthearted there. I, I apologize, but, um, I, I, well, and another thing is my channel is much, much smaller than all those guys. So, so I get, you know, you want to get the word out and you want to do this. The timing to me is still, is still kind of odd. The other thing I look at is, is the world basically is, is against Tim Ballard to the media and everything. Not that he's a huge celebrity, but, but he, you know, he's, he's known, he's known and his story is known. And it's the, the film has been discredited by virtually every major uh, mainstream media 
you know, that it's fake, it's this, it's that, blah, blah, blah. So I feel like, you know, he's over the target a little bit on that. That's how I kind of look at things. So I think that's it for that. Now, conference. Conference is coming. Uh, tomorrow, this is being broadcast the Friday before, we have a mission reunion tonight, which is going to be fun uh, and and really, really good. I'm I'm going to bring out, I left it in the other room, I'm going to be teaching out of the white, the little white missionary handbook <laughs> and, and uh, having an opportunity to reminisce with missionaries. It's going to be great. But tomorrow conference, uh, we know that President Nelson uh, will not be there in person, but probably speak to us um, uh, with the technology that we have, that we're able to do that. So that'll be great. Uh, we also uh, will, uh, Elder Holland won't be there, but I don't know if we're going to hear from him with the same means. But uh, you, you guys probably know more about that than I do. Um, we have been so busy <laughs> freeze drying, uh, harvesting still berries. Our blackberries were killer, and, and we, Sue goes out every day and and gets those and then just kind of I have we have tons of sunflowers that I love and then I I just cut the the big heads and put them out for the birds and whatnot but stalks and stuff everywhere and, and now it's time to harvest those and and get those all cleaned up and and uh you know just just this this time of year I love this time of year I love this the changing of the season I love the autumn um I have a couple of hunts planned and we'll be going in a, in a short period of time, and I'll talk about that more. Um, I purchased a grinder for me. Here's my thought. If you, if you buy all this stuff, <laughs> you, you might actually get something. <laughs> if you plan for success, then, then it'll happen. It doesn't always work that way, but that's my, that's my plan this, this year is that I'm going to go with the idea that I'm going to have to take care of some meat this year. Because the last few years, I've been like, eh, maybe I'll get something, maybe I won't. If I do, I'll worry about it later. Now I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, so, uh, I, you know, what I've done in the past, uh, I've either taken it to somebody I know and trust and have them cut it up, or I've, I've done my own, um, where, you know, the back straps and stuff are so easy. You can either make, you know, some nice little steaks or, or whatever. And usually a good roast for, you know, I'm talking about deer and, and elk and stuff. And you, you can get some good roasts out of the hind quarters and whatnot. Um, and then a lot of it, I'll make jerky. I've made a ton of jerky in my life, a ton of jerky. Smoke it, season, you know, marinate it, and then, and then put it in the smoker. Uh, but I, I really want to, you know, do some uh, burger, mix it with some uh, beef fat, get it from the butcher, and and then you know just learn how to do it, uh, and then make some some uh, jerky sticks and you know things like that as well. Um, you know where it's coming from. It's organic meat. It's all that good stuff. And then you. Um, um, you know, season it and, and take care of it. Um, the, the hog, the big hog I got a couple years ago or thereabouts a year and a half ago, it's pretty much done. We, we pounded it. It was delicious, just delicious. So that's going on this time of year. So conference, I always equate fall conference with hunting. <laughs> you know, that usually the bird hunt, the duck hunts usually start then. I, I don't do that much anymore because I just don't have a really good place to go anymore. Um, so um, that's that, but but I equate that. And quite often you could count on nasty weather on conference weekend, which we as hunters always enjoy, you know, some, some interesting uh, weather. So we have that. Now, here's... Uh, Here's what I think about conference and, and what there, there's two things that the last few years have really hit me hard. One's a quote from Joseph Smith. And I'll read it. It's really good. This is what I like to, to think about when I prepare for conference. 
Um, okay, so I'm getting this out of the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, page 149, but it comes out of the church, Doctrinal History of the Church, volume three, and it's pages 379 to 381. So Doctrinal History of the Church, volume three, 379 to 381. Now I'm not gonna read all those pages. I'm just got a little paragraph here, but I don't know. Okay, so on, on the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith by Joseph Fielding Smith, it's on page 149. And it, it, it goes through the doctrines of resurrection and election, which are really intense. But then it says this, this principle ought in its proper place to be taught for God hath not revealed anything to Joseph. Now this is interesting because Joseph is speaking in third person. So, so, so let, let me start again, but this is good. For God hath not revealed anything to Joseph, but what he will make known unto the 12. And even the least saint may know all things as fast as he, and I'll add, or she is able to bear them. Okay. For the day must come when no man need say to his neighbor, know ye the Lord, for all shall know him who remain. Now that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. So all will know him who remain. What does that mean? Well, I think it means the rapture or the quickening of the earth, the, the, the terrestrializing of the earth at Christ's coming and we'll all know him, okay? From the least to the greatest. How is this to be done? It is to be done by this, by this sealing power and the other comforter spoken of, which will be manifest by revelation. And then it talks about the two comforters, the comforter of the Holy Ghost, which he, he describes in here, and you can read it yourself, that it comes through faith, repentance, faith in Christ, repenting, being baptized and then receiving the Holy Ghost. The second comforter is, is a more sure knowledge of things. Now, when I approach conference, I think of that quote. And I've said this before, but what I like to do is instead of, instead of approaching conference with just a blank sheet in my, in my mind and go, okay, what, what are you going to reveal to me, apostles and prophets and general authorities that I don't, you know, that I don't have any understanding of? I don't like that approach for me personally. I'm not saying this should be for everybody, but for me personally, what I like to do is, is study all the time, uh, praying, participating in fasts, doing those things. And, and then when I watch conference, I like to see if, if, if the things that I have felt are confirmed through the speakers. And if, if they're not, then, then there's, there's some things and it hardly ever happens where I'm just like, like, okay, okay. Occasionally I'll go, Hmm. That's interesting to me. I've got to, I got to study that one a little bit more. But generally, it, it's like it's already been revealed to me those things, and and I feel like that's a good approach for me, to to not just go, okay, feed me. I, I'm too stupid, or I'm not good enough to know anything. So I need to wait every six months to be told. I don't like that approach. Now. Uh, I tried to find the quote and I couldn't find it, but many of you have probably heard, uh, because I can't remember uh, always where I hear things, but this was definitely Elder Bednar, and it could have been while, while we were presiding over a mission or it could have been a, a conference, I can't remember. But basically what he said is that, you know, when you're listening to a conference talk, you don't need always to be writing down what, in, in, in this case, he said, what I'm saying. This is what Elder Benner said. You don't need to write down what I'm saying because you'll get a copy of that. What you ought to be writing down is what the Spirit is telling you. And it might not have anything to do with my talk, but the Spirit is, 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 is saying something to you and then that's what you write down. 
So those two, those two quotes or those two, um, the, 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 the counsel, one from Joseph Smith and one from um, um, Elder Bednar are, are kind of the basis of how I approach conference. So first off, I want to, I want to have things that are very sacred, very spiritual, that, that I feel like have been very enlightening to me and, and an understanding. And I like to see those confirmed through, through the talks. Um, not like, wow, I never even thought of that kind of thing, but more like, yeah, okay, okay, I get it. I'm, I think I'm on the right track, you know. And then the other with Elder Bednar is writing down thoughts and impressions that come to you through, through the spirit versus word for word. Now, having said that, there's obviously times when you're going to want to write down exactly what they're saying because it's, it's so significant. So don't, you don't need to write me and say, well, you, you know, there's times when you should, I, of course, of course, I'm just talking about overall. Okay. So, um, Let's see if there's anything else I want to wrap up on this. So I'm, I'm looking forward to conference. Um, I'll be watching all sessions and, uh, and, and paying attention. Um, I, I guess just one, one last thing on uh, the last couple of videos. I know I've, I've received some negative comments on, on me being negative towards the church or leadership uh, because of, you know, things that have happened. Uh, I, I think your, your criticisms are totally valid. I, 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 uh, but I don't want it just left at, at, at those experiences I've, I've had and how I've conveyed them. I, I, I hope I've made, given the message that these experiences have made us, I'll say us, but I, I'll say me, have made me stronger in the gospel, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm okay with those things happening. The reason why I bring them up is that I just have some some insight in a tiny way of, of what you know Brother Ballard is going through, and and where all of a sudden you know something's said about you, and you know you're, you're blindsided. His bishop hadn't talked to him, stake president, that kind of thing. So I, I bring them up just, just, just for that reason, not as being critical to, here's what I think. Most 70s, all 70s, they're there for a reason. And they're there because they, most of them have type A personalities, I think, and they get the job done. But to, to, To think that that there's never a, a, a mistake or or a, a judgment that that was wrong, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just not good to think that way. In my opinion, however, it would never. What does that have to do with the truthfulness of of Joseph Smith's first vision story, his experience, his testimony? What does that have to do with the 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 authenticity, the divineness, uh, and the inspired Book of Mormon? has nothing to do with that. Or, or that the priesthood keys are held by, by 15 men right now. And President Nelson is our prophet and president of the church right now. It has nothing to do with that. It's just acknowledging that, that there are things that happen. And, and it, for me, it's okay to say it, but that's just me. Some people feel like you cannot say or do anything that that questions anything. Um, I remember I made a comment on one of the churches. Um, I, I subscribed to everything the church has in, in the form of a YouTube kind of channel thing and church news and there's other, other things. And there was one comment I went, you know what? There's no call for, for change or repentance. This was just nothing but a nothing burger um, that you spend a lot of money on this ad. And man, the comments that, um, cause I thought, you know, maybe they'd want some comments that were not just fluff, right? Not just fluff. And, and 
I never got a reply back from the church, but other people watching it, they commented and, and they felt I was out of line in, in saying anything critical about the video. So I get it, I, I get it, I do, I do. Um, now, one last thing. Um, we're getting we're getting close, really close to putting a, a deal together with Legacy Tours for uh, next fall, a year from now, for a trip to Israel. And I, I can't wait. This will be amazing. This trip will be amazing. So there's the there's the trip to Israel, but on the front side of that, which is optional, there'll be there'll be six or seven days in Egypt, which will be incredible. And then, and then in the middle is the Israel, which will be the main focus. But then on the tail end, there's this amazing uh, extended trip to Jordan. Now, we'll have all the details, we'll have everything out there, but I just wanted to make you aware of that. And you can do, you know, just Israel, or you can tack, you know, do Israel and Jordan at the end, or or you can have Egypt and then Israel, and, and that's it. Or just e or just Egypt if you want it. So you, you'll have options there. Is what I'm saying. But uh, the total days I think would be like 18 days, maybe total. I could be wrong on that. I'll have to take a look. It might be closer to 20, but it's a, it's a big it's a long trip you know, over two weeks for sure. But um, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. I hope uh, we can have um, just a very spiritual connection to the Savior in the Holy Land. And really, Egypt is connected just directly. And there's so many connections in, in the country of Jordan now. So many things took place there. This is where Moses and Aaron, and this is where... Um, the the uh, the the what they call the treasury, you know, the the big carved, beautiful. It's amazing. I've only been there once, and I can't wait to get back there again. But um, there there's some major ties to Jerusalem, to the wife of Herod that he divorced, to to that, and the Bedouin and the the Nabataeans, the Bedouin people there. Oh, they're just they're just the best they're so cool they're so awesome and so that will be that will be a great uh, a great thing so more information to come on that um, but I'm just kind of putting a tickler out there because um, you kind of have to plan ahead and there's so many variables things can happen blah 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 but you got to plan and you got to move forward with faith right so there's that all right that's it for this video we'll talk after conference um, I, I'm not anticipating anything, uh, extraordinary maybe from this conference. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that, um, President Nielsen won't be there in person and, and or Elder Holland and, and we'll just, we'll just be fed and we'll also, um, pay attention to the spirit and what the spirit has to say to us personally personally. And uh, that's it. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.